Okay, we're going to take a look at another complex derivative. This one actually isn't quite as complicated as the other one, but remember, I said anytime you have a rule within a rule, you have a complex derivative. And so this right here, basically, we're going to be using the power rule on the top here. And uh, within the, that is within the product, the uh, sorry, the quotient rule. The bottom, of course, is just the derivative of that six. But we have a rule within a rule. We have the product rule within the quotient rule, and that's why we consider it a complex derivative. Again, this is the second example on complex derivatives. So here's the thing, though. All right. <laughs> Remember from the last uh, example we did, our first step is to make the derivative easier. Um, again, I need to spell that correctly. Derivative is e, uh, IVE. Um, guess what? Even though you have a power rule within a quotient rule, because you only have one term on the bottom, it's going to be easier if you just take each component of the top and divide by the bottom, because then you can just use the power rule. You don't have to worry about the quotient rule. So right off the bat, let's just distribute this 6x into each term in the top. So you have 3x squared over 6x plus 2x over 6x minus 9 over 6x. You get 1 half x plus 1 third, and then that will become 3 halves, and then x is in the bottom, so we'll make it to the negative 1. That way we can easily apply the power rule. So now, that's all we have to do. We don't have to do the quotient rule now that we've simplified it that way. We'll just use the power rule. We don't need to label components from largest to smallest because we can just use the power rule. So try to avoid complex derivatives. That's the gist of this example. If you don't, if it doesn't have to be complicated, don't make it complicated. So now we'll just use the power rule to skip over some of these steps that aren't needed. The derivative of 1 half x is 1 half. The derivative of 1 third is 0. The derivative of this, move the negative out front and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So you get positive 3 halves because it's negative negative x to the negative 2 and if you want to as I tell my students uh, you could make that exponent positive and put it on the bottom so that would actually become what uh, 3 over 2x squared you don't have to do that though in my class some teachers are different obviously if it's a multiple choice test and that's one of the answer choices you need to be able to, to match it with that one that's it for example two. The gist of this was simplifying before you take the derivative to avoid having to do a rule within a rule. All right, next up we'll do example three.